Today's video, we're gonna show you how to get rid of one of the worst shots in the game. If you've hit this shot, this nasty hot pool, yeah. you know how frustrating it can be. And we've got ourselves in our Foresight studio here. So we're really gonna kind of show you the damage this shot can cause. And we see a lot of golfers struggle with it. Yeah, we're not only gonna show you the, a couple of the concepts that are causing the problem, mm. then we're gonna show you what really happens with good players and just understanding this concept is pretty much gonna help alleviate this shot. That's exactly right. So. Come back in just a second. We're going to show you how to get rid of the pool. All right, so we're at number 17 at Quail Hollow. I'm sure you've seen this shot on TV. Sean's coming to the Wells Fargo, tied for the lead with 17 here right in front of him. And there's water left, water short. The only place is dry is to the right. It's even water a little bit long. So Sean, stand over this 170-yard shot. Yeah. But I want you to have one of these concepts that we're about to talk about in mind and hit this shot. Yeah, so th there's two that we're going to talk about. I'll do <laughs> one of them, and then we'll talk about Do the one you were taught to do. Yeah, okay, perfect. Got it. All right, here we go. I'm starting to sweat already. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great way to practice when you have these kind of shot yeah. uh, balances hanging in the, in the weight there. Exactly. All right, I'm going to give it the, the concept that I was taught a long time ago. And that is pulled just enough. That's pulled, and which is just going to make it go hot. Long enough. And we pretty are hitting common, the shot again for your efforts. Pretty common, right? <laughs> so let's talk about that. You know, I was taught um, a lot of things over the years. I had a lot of teachers over the years, a lot of, you know, top teachers. And yep. some of the stuff I was taught, um, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they've gotten smarter since then, but it, was, it wasn't as good as I would have liked. Well, we're just able to measure more now. Exactly. Yeah, so, we're able to see what players actually do yeah. compared to some of the ideas from the past. It took me down some bad roads. Yeah. And one, the one for me was the feeling that you take the club and almost spear it at the ball. So the hand's going from the top straight at the ball in like a beeline. So if I make set up to it or go to the top? Yeah. So I've kind of got hands and ball kind of somewhere on the same line. So you're going to try to take your hand straight out to the ball. Straight at the ball. So um, the only way for me not to pull it from there, the average golfer, when he does that, will start to kind of like tip everything. Right. So that's the first thing. If, if your concept of the swing is to take the hand straight at the ball, which any other, any other um, motion you're making, like hammering a nail, that's what you do, right? right. Golf's a little different. If you do that, you have to make some kind of contorted movements with your body and your wrist to keep it in line. And that's kind of what I ended up with because I got sick of hitting it left. So right. I made some other adjustments. So that's the first one. It's this yep. idea of hands at the ball. And we're going to look at gears here in a minute and show what really happens. The other one is taking it up to the top and feeling like you leave your arms up and you're going to like Start ro to rotate. rotate with no movement from the arms in this downward direction. If you do that and you do accomplish that, you're going to put your hands again out over the target line. You're going to hit it left and pull it unless you again like kind of back out of it this way to try to keep the club back inside the target line. We see a lot of golfers who are doing that move, yeah. that concept of leaving the hands up, really rotate, have to aim so far to the right that they become accustomed to playing a pull, which brings in a number of different shots that you're going to see out on the golf course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So those two ideas, spearing the ball or taking the hand straight at the ball or leaving the arms up and rotating both tend to pop the grip out towards the target line, and most golfers from there are going to come over the top exactly and right. hit this pull. You have to do some really difficult for a lot of golfers compensation moves to avoid doing that. Absolutely right. There's a, and then there's an easier way. Yes. Thank goodness. Yes. So let's go to the gears uh, yes. data. Let's see what the best players in the world are doing. Let's come back and see how you can implement it with a drill and add it to your game. Let's first take a look at what a common professional hand path looks like in the downswing. Our pro here is a strong ball striker who plays a fairly neutral ball flight, and he represents a hand path we see so often in great ball strikers. And for reference, when we talk about hand path, we're talking about the point on the grip where the two hands connect, or roughly the grip's midpoint. The first thing to notice right away is the start direction his hands take as they begin the downswing. It's back or away from the target line. It doesn't move out towards the target line, which happens if the arms are left up and you just try to turn to start your downswing. Next, notice this back and around curve to the early part of his hand path. This curve isn't something he's trying to create. It's the result of the backward start combined with the gradual ramping up of downswing rotation. It's also why the start direction and intent you have from the top is so important. And now by the time his hands get under his shoulder turn, 
a phrase we use all the time when talking about hand path, the overall shape of his hand path is moving sharply downward with little outward movement. The hand path is steep as the club shallows. That's a critical concept to get. Day in and day out, we see AMs trying to do the opposite with their hand path. They try to shallow the hands only to cause the club to steepen, not the combination you want in your golf swing. From here, the turn begins to carry the hands out and around through impact as you're seeing here. If we boil his hand path down to its most simplest shape, and that's by connecting a line from the start of his hand path to the finish of his hand path, you can see just how inside the ball the hands move when looking at a tour level swing. From the top, your hands should work down steeper than a direct line out towards the golf ball. When they go out towards the ball at the start, you create a necessity for a whole slew of compensations you don't want to deal with in your quarter of a second downswing. All right, now let's add two more pros to the screen here. So now you're looking at three hand paths that have been responsible for over 20 wins out on the PGA Tour. One is a fader, one is a drawer, and one's a straight ball hitter. But as you can see, the same thing happens with all three hand paths, netting in a straight line that points well inside the ball line from the top. Let's now compare these three with three common amateur hand paths. These AMs range from five to 13 handicappers. One likes to play a draw, one likes to play a fade, and one likes to hit it straight. But they all came to see us to try to get rid of hitting the hot pull. One was trying to lean the arms up and rotate out to the top, which he was doing. The other two were trying to take the hands out towards the golf ball to start their downswing, which both of them were doing. In each case, they were successfully executing what their intent was to start their downswing, and in all three cases, the result was hitting a pull. So you've got to make sure you have the correct concept so when you actually start doing what you're trying to do, it's going to help you to produce the shots you're trying to hit. So what we saw on gears was that the hands take a much deeper path. They don't go out towards the golf ball. They're deep down back this and way. And the club moves away also. Yeah. So really both hands and club are moving away from, away the, from ball the ball to start the downswing. Mm -hmm. The pivot carries it on around, makes it look very normal. But if you're not used to doing that, you need kind of a drill to ingrain that. Yeah, and, and we talk about this a lot um, in our swing system you know, is separating the movements, right? So right. let's say for all intents and purposes, we go to the top of the swing and we were able to freeze our body and just see what the arms do from the top. Mm -hmm. They would actually work more in this direction, kind of the, the arms and the club working more to 45 behind us, kind of to the corner of the room. Right. So if you go up to the top and stay there and feel that, like your arms working kind of downward this way, um, and the club staying back behind you more and the club head staying back behind you. If you did that motion, then added some turn in, to bring the club back out in front, that planes the club very really normal. nice. Very normal looking. Do that again. Because yeah. the knock on this move, and a reason why a lot of golfers try to avoid it, is when you go back to the top, mm -hmm. and you just isolate that arm movement again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not taking your hands deeper or your left arm across your chest more. That's actually rolling them down in it's just, front of your chest. It's just coming down to the side right. of my chest. Right arm straightening. Yeah. Creating width. Yeah. And it's getting everything back in front of your chest. Exactly. You said. Now, that doesn't happen in isolation. No, because right? at the same time, if I do this and I rotate, I mean, this puts me in such a good spot to have the club That classic front. spot. It's really simple once you can separate the movements in your head. Right, and having a tool like Gears lets us really kind of look past all the distortions and mm -hmm. just falsities. Fal is falsity a word? Falsities, maybe. Falsities, falsities of video. We just got really high. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Video. You know, you look at a video and you think you see some things, but you don't realize things are happening in the 3D. That's why gears are so effective exactly right. for kind of breaking down these motions. So a really good player has a great drill for this. Is it the Justin Rose drill? Yeah, Justin Rose, and we've seen him do it a bunch, and he's, he's got a more exaggerated version now even, but the one that we talk about is just kind of taking the left arm down the side of the chest like this and letting it slide down instead of popping out towards the target line and having to make some kind of motion at the okay, ball. Okay, so let's do this in pieces. Okay. So we're going to kind of do our version of Justin's drill. Okay. So let's go to the top. Okay. We're going to bring it down mm -hmm. right there where it's kind of shaft parallel. Mm-hmm. Right there, just spin and chip it. Good. Beautiful. So we see now a ball that started right of the target line, mm -hmm. which if you hit pulls, especially when water's love left, seeing that. that's going to be a really good feeling for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, now let's go back. So 
do that until you can get the ball starting how you want. Mm -hmm. That ball actually came back a little bit yeah. too. So well, that... it already started to draw, but we just, it yeah. was a chip. Okay. All right, now let's start to add a little more speed to it. All right, so I'm gonna take it to the top, feel that motion a couple yep. of times, All right? Yep. There we I go. Just chipped another one out there. That one, might actually, push draw. That one mm -hmm. actually might make it. All right. Middle of the green. You know, and I'm not going full speed. I have this, you know, motion here. Where I'm just kind of coasting. Right. And, and the trick is to go slow enough so your brain can keep up. Absolutely. So if I go full speed, I'm just going to go back to my normal pattern, whatever that may be. A little bit slower, I can think my way through this a little bit and say, okay, I need to feel the arms a little feeling that way as I'm turning and that'll play in the club and keep it back where it needs to be in order to come out in front, start the ball in line. Such a great point because we see golfers when they come in and see us and we're out in the range with them, do that all the time. They'll get the drill, they'll get the feel, boom. And then they see it work on that very next ball. Yeah. Then the very next ball after that, they, they go, go full, full speed, speed, hit their pull, and then they start efforting harder to make it not pull. Yeah, and now look, that, that ball was seven degrees, uh, my club path was 7.5 into out, so it's an exaggeration. Right. When I pick up some speed, that'll get a lot more back to neutral, but for a lot of you that have been kind of steep and with leftward path, yes. that feeling of the club more behind you and swinging out to the right a little, once you go back to speed again, hopefully that'll just kind of neutral out, which is usually what happens. Stay at a speed where you can make the shot that you're trying to fix happen. Yeah. In your case, you're going to hit push, draw, push, draw, push, draw, or yeah. push, 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 yeah. anything but a pull. Yeah. When you got that down, then you start to add speed. If it starts pulling, you drop the speed back down, work in motion again, because there's going to be a certain point when you're learning this that your old move is just going to happen. Yeah. And you've got to, again, break the pattern, go back, slow it down, and add speed as you're more successful. Give that a try. You will stop hitting pulls. If you found this video helpful, and you need more help with your consistency, we want to help you with that. Go to the first comment below this video, you'll see a link. Click on that link, we'll take you to our number one consistency drill to help you hit the ball more solidly and more consistent every time you're out on the course.